In question one, we want to test whether the frequencies of phone calls are all the same for each day of the week. Now I've copied these observed frequencies here already into Excel. I've copied the observed frequencies here. The next thing I want to do is I want to state the hypothesis for this test. Now the probability that a phone call comes in on a Sunday is 1 in 7 if the phone call frequency is the same for every day of the week. And if that's the case, the probability of a phone call coming in on a Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, they're all the same. In other words, the null hypothesis can be restated as is this distribution uniform? Are the phone calls uniformly distributed across days of the week? Thus, the null hypothesis in SIGH now is going to be stated as the distribution of phone calls is uniformly distributed. The alternative hypothesis there exists one day, K could be Sunday, or it could be Monday, or it could be Tuesday, or it could be Wednesday, or it could be Thursday, or it could be Friday, or it could be Saturday. There's one that stands out. So one of these above does not equal the other. Another way of stating that is the distribution is not uniformly distributed because there's one that is different than the others. So the alternative hypothesis in gauge now is is not uniformly distributed. Next we want to get the number of calls in the sample. To get the number of calls in the sample, we just sum the calls for each day. The total number of calls in the sample is 2,475, and we're going to paste that in a sun gauge now here. Next we have to compute the expected frequencies to two decimal places. If the probability of a phone call coming in on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, if those probabilities are all the same, then the expected frequency should be all the same. And to calculate the expected frequency for Monday, we take the total number of calls for the week and multiply that by the hypothesized probability. Now, after I hit enter, I'm going to pull this down to get all these other expected frequencies. And when I do that, this box is going to come down one at a time, and we want to freeze this box. So I'm going to click on C22 and hit the F4 button to freeze the blue box in cell 22. So the expected frequencies are all the same. We multiply each probability by the total. Now, if we did this right, the sum of expected frequencies should be equal to the total number of observed frequencies, which is the case. Now, I needed these to two decimal places, so I'm going to copy one of these and then paste it here, here, etc. Now, we need to compute the sum of expected frequencies, and again, remember that was equal to the sum of observed frequency. Next, we have to compute the test statistic to four decimal places. To get the test statistic, what we have to do first is subtract the observed frequency from the expected frequency, and then do that for every day of the week. Next, we're going to square these deviations from expectation. Next, we're going to divide what we just did, the square deviation from expectation, we're going to divide that by the expected frequency for each case. Test statistic is just the sum of that final column. 9.7002. Now the intuition behind the test statistic is this. If the observed frequencies are about the same as what we expect, in this case we expect uniform, then these values over here are going to be quite small. However, we have this Sunday value. The Sunday value contributes the most 
to the test statistic. Now, why is that? Well, Sunny call volume is much lower than what we expected if phone calls are independent of days of the week. So this value here, which corresponds to the Sunday observed frequency, contributes the most to the test statistic. Now, is that enough to make this test statistic large? If the test statistic is large, then we can include what? The distribution is not uniform. How do we know if this test statistic is large? Well, we've got to compare it to critical values. Before we do that, I'm going to copy this value in the sun gauge now. Okay, the degrees of freedom are equal to the number of categories minus one. And we have seven categories, so the degrees of freedom here are six. We want a 5% level of significance. So we're going to go to the chi-square table. We're going to go to row six and column 0.05. Okay, we're in column 0.05 and row six. So the critical value is 12.592. To conclude the test, we have to compare the test statistic to the critical value. Now, if the difference between the observed frequency and the expected frequencies are zero, then our chi-square test statistic is going to be zero. Because these are all going to be zero, these are going to be zero, these are going to be zero, and there's some of zero. So the closer the test statistic gets to zero, the more evidence we have in support of the null hypothesis. The further this test statistic gets from zero, the less evidence we have in support of the null hypothesis. But this value is not bigger than the critical value. So we're going to conclude by saying that we cannot reject the null hypothesis. In other words, it appears it appears the number of phone calls is roughly the same for all days of the week. And then we're going to check our work. We should get everything correct. And we do.